Okay, so I have two short poems. And this first one I wrote this morning, so we'll just go over there. It might, might not go that well, but we'll try. Okay, it's called <coughs> How to Count to Ten and End Up in Power, A Guide. Yes. One woman, a manifesto of hate, looking for a mandate, playing fast and low with her own fate. A two-party system grows anew, because this election was either red or blue, and the nation split. What are you going to do? 318 seats the Tories wield. Not a majority. Sorry, Mrs. Wheatfield. <laughs> doesn't get through to you, sitting up there in your ivory tower, clinging to your last shreds of power. <laughs> 45 LGBT MPs. I don't think they're going to be that pleased with this bigoted fascist party you appease. So I'm saying, Theresa, please, there are six other parties in the UK, and no one will blame you if you say, I think they deserve to win today. I'm letting June be the end of May. Because 76% turnout from the Snapchat generation shows you can't put a filter on aggravation. Even if you turn us away at the polling station, we care about the future of this nation. Eighth, 8th of June should have been your victory day. Instead, you're shacking up with racists just so you can say. Nine days to the start of the Brexit deal. And I don't know how you feel, but I can't believe it could be real that just 10 seats for the DUP means danger and misery for the likes of you and me. But something getting clearer by the hour, some people will do anything just to cling to power. Okay, and this poem I wrote just after Brexit, but it's about unity in the UK, so it's still relevant. <laughs> There'll always be an England, that's what I've heard them sing. But you see, that's the thing, what do we think we bring to this world that is constantly growing? Because you know, throughout history we're the bad guys, because our empire isn't something to be proud of. We shouldn't shout it loud, because we invaded and we killed just so we could build on someone else's land. And that is not what I want from England. Rolling hills and green fields, rivers and views that give you shivers, climb a hill and the view it delivers. And our cities are passion and delight, and when one tires of London, one, one, one tires of life. And if that is our legacy, then everything is all right. Well, you all know the Bard, and it's not hard to know why he inspires the nation, but we're also a centre for exploration. Now, science may be considered a dork thing, but we're the country that has Stephen Hawking. <laughs> we bewitched the world with a wizard school, and if you don't think that's cool, then there's four lads from Liverpool. <laughs> who shook the world and paved the way for rock and roll today. And that's what people should say when asked what England is. There'll always be an England, as long as there is art, and this country can become once more my lion heart. But we need unity, a nation hand in hand. And if that's how we can take a stand, then there will always be an England. Thank you, Heidi. Keep that for Heidi, everybody. I'm going to invite our final speaker, Marie, to come and speak to us. I hope so.